Ah, you return. Is there more to report to me, mademoiselle? And that is everything I have discovered so far. We progress, mademoiselle. Now, let us see what we can learn. The timetable is very complete now. Oh, yes, it is essential to the understanding of the crime. Study it carefully. We have many alibis we can use to eliminate suspects. Yes, too many. Compare them all. Look for discrepancies. We must be certain that they do not leak the water. I believe I have collected all the passports. Très bien, mademoiselle. You have done well. I think I have secured all the fingerprints. Très bien, mademoiselle. You have done well. Madame Hubbard heard a woman in Monsieur Ratchet's room. Oui. And about the time you heard the noise and saw the woman in the scarlet kimono. So, does a woman speak to Monsieur Ratchet, murder him, drop a handkerchief with the letter H, then scurry off down the corridor in a scarlet kimono? Or does Madame Hubbard hallucinate a woman's voice as well as the man in her room? The valet masterman says Ratchet took less than his normal sleeping draft. So, instead of a comatose Ratchet who would not struggle when the knife began its work, we have a Ratchet who might cry out. But after the cry, I heard Ratchet tell Michelle that there was nothing wrong. Monsieur McQueen saw the woman in the scarlet kimono. But not enough to identify her. And he says he saw Michelle coming from the direction of the salon car, or at least someone in an attendant's uniform. Colonel Arbuthnot saw the attendant and thinks he caught the scent of a woman. Ah, the scent of a woman. You have found a romantic streak I would not have suspected one so stolid to possess. Hildegard Schmidt saw an attendant leaving a compartment. Oui, one of the middle rooms. Either Ratchet's or Madame Hubbard's. And his description? No, it is not Pierre Michel, this small dark man with a moustache who speaks in the high voice. No, but he matches the description Ratchet gave Hardman of his enemy. Both Madame Hubbard and Mademoiselle Olsen confirm the connecting door was locked. An attendant's pass key opens even connecting doors, I think, so I am not so baffled by that locked door. Colonel Arbuthnot saw Monsieur Hardman watching the corridor from his room. Monsieur Hardman's door opens to the right, so unfortunately he could see little of the corridor, but he would have seen if anyone entered the Calais coach from the Athens Paris coach. Hardman's actions were very suspicious. And the key he discovers in Michel's clothing that opens the door to the security room in the baggage car is suspicious as well. McQueen is the son of the district attorney involved in the Armstrong case. Uh, uh, pardon, district attorney? What is that? Some sort of police official, I believe. Princess Dragomirov was Sonia Armstrong's godmother. Oui, it is coincidence, or... Something more? Merci, mademoiselle. Unfortunately, the report it is not yet complete. We are now armed with much more additional knowledge than before. Continue the investigation, and do not be afraid to go over the ground you have already covered. This seems to be a security door. It certainly lives up to its name. It's locked. The key fit... Quite interesting. Quite interesting.
quite interesting. It's locked fast. I think I heard a click. It's open. I'll put this into my scrapbook so I can take a closer look at it later. It's locked far. It's locked far. Well, what do we have here? Well, what? Oh my, just what is all this for? Crime et punition, Géographie Européenne, Introduction à la science, interesting selection. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. There's a visible fingerprint here. I obtained a clear print and have filed it. It has a fingerprint on it. I obtained a clear print and have filed it. It looks like someone had a meal here recently. It looks like it's a makeshift. I'd better put the lid back on for appearances. Fingerprint. I obtained a clear.
These goods are being shipped. They do not belong to anyone currently on the train. This would be the choice of Poirot. There's a visible fingerprint here. I obtained a... It has a fingerprint on it. I obtained a clear print and have filed it. Fingerprint. I obtained a clear print and have filed it. There's a visible fingerprint here. I obtained a clear print and have filed it. Your current... Um... has a fingerprint on it. I obtained a clear print and have filed it. I obtained a clear print and have filed it. These prints don't match. The prints match.
the prints match. The prints match. The prints match. The prints match. The prints match. The prints match. The prints match. I obtained a clear print and have filed it. The prints match. I obtained a clear print and a file. The prints match. The prints match. I obtained a clear print.
These prints. These prints don't. These prints don't. These prints. These prints. These prints don't. These prints. These prints. These prints don't. These prints. These prints. These prints. These prints. These prints. These prints. These prints don't mark. These prints don't. Does nothing strike you as... Excellent. Like the hand... My body heat will melt it. I must find something to pick it up with. That is most pleasing. That is how Poirot would have done it. I can't see anything of in. Poirot could see at once that these are the shoes of a man much too small to have made the footprint. Not a precise. Poirot could see a
not a person. Poirot could see at once. Poirot could see. Poirot could see. Poirot could see at one. Nothing to see. To the trained eye, these would appear to be a match most precise. Ah, you return. Is there more to report to me, mademoiselle? <laughs> And that is everything I have discovered so far. We progress, mademoiselle. Now, let us see what we can learn. I believe I've compared the footprint cast to all the men's shoes. Unfortunately, I do not think so, mademoiselle. Please to make certain next time. Remember our challenge. The footprints in the snow belong to Foscarelli. And his fingerprints are found upon the windowsill of Monsieur Ratchet's room. Yet he does not smoke a pipe. Nor, I think, does the cambric handkerchief with the letter H belong to him. The stiletto I found in the hut must be the murder weapon. That would seem to be the obvious conclusion. It is the weapon of the underworld assassin, to be sure. And with fingerprints which match no one's aboard this train. We have not one, but two additional attendants' uniforms. Two uniforms, two knives, possibly two murderers, one right-handed and one left? Can they have had the same plan to sneak about disguised as attendants in order to murder Monsieur Ratchet in his sleep? What a moment that must have been as they encounter one another over the body. It is like a scene from a Marx Brothers movie, that. Someone was hiding in Ratchet's crate. A valuable statue is stolen. And then the thief decides to do what? what? Masquerade as the statue? 
To escape detection? The missing statue is another motive for murder. Why not? We have the possible revenge from the Armstrong kidnapping, a possible assassin from Ratchet's underworld past. So why not a thief who kills Ratchet to cover up his crime? If we find nine more motives for the murder and ten more knives, we at least will have explained all those stab wounds. The books in Ratchet's crate were all references of use to the murderer. Explain, mademoiselle. Geographie Européenne would be helpful in following the route of the train and choosing the best spot for murder. Introduction à la séance could give information about sleeping drafts. And crime a punition by Dostoevsky? Was the guilty conscience of the killer haunting him as he did the unfortunate Rashkolnikov? Mateo's fingerprints are on the padlock from the door of the hut. That padlock interests me. Why would Mateo have a key to a shepherd's hut in the middle of the mountains, near the spot where he would have no idea the train would be stopped by an avalanche? Monsieur Poirot, you don't think the avalanche was caused deliberately? No, mademoiselle, I do not. There are enough fantastic elements to this crime already, without introducing the saboteurs. But then how could his fingerprints come to be on that hut? They were not on the hut, but on the padlock. Further investigation appears necessary on this point. The padlock was taken when Mateo's ham radio equipment was sabotaged. Someone has gone to great trouble, it seems, to direct suspicion upon this young man. Yet how can he have reached the Calais coach unobserved? I have all the pieces. All that remains is for me to assemble them properly. Très bien, mademoiselle. You have done well. And so we advance in our investigations. It is obvious that our fellow passengers have not been entirely forthright. You have still not had the opportunity to search all of the compartments, and there are other mysteries still to be explained. Those whistles mean a train with a snowplow has arrived from Broad. We should be on our way again in a very few hours. Can you see any clear path to the solution of the mystery, Monsieur Poirot? There is a path, certainement. How clear it is as yet, I cannot say. And you? Have you no theories? So many clues, so many theories. You have hammered the nail on its head, mademoiselle. There are far too many clues, too many theories. Please to recommence the investigation to sweet. Poirot could see at Monsieur Masterman, you were once in military service. Yes, miss, but I can't think how you could know. Love's Captive by Mrs. Arabella Richardson. Ah, yes. One of the privileges a soldier retains after he's mustered out. Access to the Royal Military Library. It's quite well stocked. Not all strategy and tactics and memoirs, as you've discovered. What was your regiment? Miss Marceau, I'm going to tell you the truth. My service is, of course, a matter of record. I don't wish to hide it. I'm quite proud of it, as a matter of fact. But it's easily researched. And the connections will be found. Connections? I'm sure you must already suspect. Yes, I knew Colonel Armstrong. I was his Batman in the war, and afterwards his valet in New York. I'm afraid I concealed that fact when you questioned me earlier. It was very wrong of me, miss. I feel better now that I've made a clean breast of it. 
Would you like to change your story about last night? Why, no. It is as I told you. Do you have anything more to tell me of the Italian gentleman? No, miss, and I hope you're not suspecting Tonio in any way. Tonio wouldn't hurt a fly, and I can state positively that he never left our compartment all last night. Tonio may be a foreigner, miss, but he's a very gentle creature, really. Not like those nasty, murdering mafiosi one reads about. You seem to know Tonio better than you led me to believe. Well, yes, we work together. He... Well, he hasn't told you yet. I thought he had. That's why I... Oh, dear. I think I have nothing more to say. That will be all, thank you. Pardon me, Count. I still have one or two matters I would like to discuss. Then please, do so. Did you notice the grease spot on your passport? See it just at the beginning of your wife's first name? These things happen when traveling. Have you remembered anything about last night that might help us? Nothing. That will do for now, Count Andrenyi. Countess, I'm sorry to bother you again, but I wonder if I might have another word with you. Certainly. Do you remember when I showed you this handkerchief? Handmade, embroidered in Paris, and of course, the letter H. Three ladies aboard have the letter H in their names. But Madame Hubbard considers such a handkerchief useless. Mademoiselle Debenham's middle name is Hermione, but her handkerchiefs are dainty linen, not expensive. Hildegard Schmidt is a lady's maid, not a lady. Why are you telling me this? It leaves only you and Princess Dragomirov, but her first name is Natalia. It isn't my handkerchief. There is a wet luggage label on your suitcase. Oh? Pulling it back, I found the initials HMK. Well, that is fascinating, isn't it? You told me you have never been to America. I've never been to America. When you say you've never been to America, you say it with an American accent. These questions are pointless. These are observations, Monsieur Lacan, not questions. You take too much upon yourself, mademoiselle. You are not a detective. You are a clerk in a train office, and your employer will hear her a representative of this railway, treated a diplomat and his wife. Why was the grease spot added to your passport and the label to your case? My wife has told you the handkerchief is not hers. There are no H's in her name. Let that be an end to it. Why did you hide your true identity? Surely you can guess the reason? This man, who called himself Ratchet, murdered my baby niece, killed my sister, and broke my brother-in-law's heart. Three of the people I loved best and who made up my home, my world. Of all the people on this train, I alone had the strongest motive for killing him. I give you my word of honor. Helena never left her compartment last night. Then the handkerchief is yours. No, it is not. I know I can't hope to make you believe me, but I assure you that is the truth. When we learned who the man was, and that the handkerchief had been found with the letter H near his body, I pointed out to Helena it would be better to remove any connection to her. A luggage label, a grease spot to cover the alteration. What could be simpler? I have read quite a bit about crime, Monsieur Lacan. I hope you will take it as a compliment if I say you have the makings of a very fine criminal. I think I will not take that as a compliment, no. Madame la Comtesse, the motive for the murder lies in the past, in the tragedy that broke up your home. Help me. Take me back into the past. Tell me about your sister's household. What can I tell you? They're all dead, all dead, all dead! Sonia, Robert, darling, darling, Daisy. That curly hair, impossible to comb, that sweet, sweet smile. Tell me about the nursery maid who committed suicide. Suzanne? If she was involved, I'm sure it was innocently. Chatting idly with someone, giving the times of Daisy's outings. 
What was Suzanne's nationality? She was French. What was Suzanne's last name? I was only a child myself at the time. All we called her was Suzanne. Was there a nurse? Yes, a trained hospital nurse. New Daughter was her name. Did you have a tutor or governess, perhaps? Yes, she was a dragon. English, or rather Scots. A big red-haired woman. What was her name? Miss Freebody, if you can believe it. How old was she? She seemed frightfully old to me at the time. But I suppose she couldn't have been more than 40. I know you were only a child at the time, and that the passage of years changes a person, but have you seen anyone on this train who reminds you of any of those people? No, mademoiselle. I don't think she's in the mood for conversation. Monsieur Hartman? I owe you an apology, Miss Marceau. You do? I wasn't very polite when we first met outside the station. And I came on kind of strong when you caught me going through Michelle's things. There's no excuse for it. Fact is, I've always liked French girls. And that's not a line, just the way it is. That makes my behavior even worse somehow, I think. I'm sorry. Thank you, Monsieur Hartman. I accept your apology. Thanks. So exactly what's up on this train? Seems bug house to me. To me too, sometimes. Fire away if you want to grill me some more. Have you done any more investigating of your own? Nope, after you caught me, I figured it wasn't worth it. Snooping around might make me look guilty. I've been sitting tight. It seems obvious the murder is tied to the Armstrong kidnapping. How did you and Poirot get wise to that? That's what I'd like to know. We guessed. <laughs> okay, I'll pretend I believe that. <laughs> you were not the gardener at the Armstrong house, were you? <laughs> they didn't have a garden. I'm beginning to believe I'm about the only one on this train who had no connection to that case. Have you any ideas of your own about the crime? I admit it's got me beat. I understand we'll be underway soon. Yes, the snow is being cleared now. I'm sorry you'll miss your boat to America. Under the circumstances, I've decided to stop in Paris for a few days, play with my grandchildren, and recuperate from this trip. Have you thought of anything else that might be helpful to our investigation? Well, you certainly have everyone in an uproar. Maybe next time you'll be able to be more discreet. Oh, I forgot. You probably won't be doing any more investigating after this, will you? That's all. That wasn't helpful? I thought it was. That will do for now, Madame Hubbard. Come back later, ma'am. Hello again. Monsieur McQueen. I love how you say my name. Will you be serious? I am serious. Sorry, sorry. I better be careful. I've realized I'm definitely the most suspicious character on the train. 
All you have to do is find a will in which the old man left me all his money, and that'll just about clinch it. Is there a will? Um, not that I know of. He'd never leave me a cent, really. I was just useful to him. Languages and so on. I'm no linguist, but I can get by in German and Italian and... French. You told me you knew Sonia Armstrong. Yes, yes I did. My dad was the district attorney on the case. So yes, well, I was just a kid, of course, a teenager. Schoolboy crush, I suppose, and all that. It occurs to me that in spite of everything, the murder may not have to do with the Armstrong case at all. Oh? I thought that must be pretty settled. We have much evidence pointing to the existence of an outsider aboard the train. One who disguises himself, uses a stiletto to kill, then vanishes into the snow. What do you think? It's certainly a possibility, but in that case, it'll be hard to catch now. He's had quite a head start. Or he could be out there frozen in a snowdrift or lying broken at the bottom of a rocky ravine. The body may never be found until the spring thaw. Well, that conjures up an unpleasantly graphic image. You seem to really enjoy this stuff. I enjoy the investigation, monsieur. I certainly do not enjoy the fact that a man has died. No. No, of course not. Say, I was just wondering. I mean, I have no plans to return to the States right away. I may find myself back in Istanbul. I was wondering if you might consider having dinner with me some night. I might consider it if you promise to relax. Relax? Sure, you bet. You will. Say, that's swell. You've got ten times the spunk of any girl... Well, had a good rummage through my kit, I expect? Yes, thank you. There is still some information I think you might be able to give us. Indeed? I hardly think so. Is that pipe cleaner one of yours? Don't know. I don't have the monogram. Can you tell me how the pipe cleaner came to be in Monsieur Ratchet's compartment? Haven't a clue. Did you go into Monsieur Ratchet's compartment at any time? I've never even spoken to the man. You never spoke to him, and you did not murder him. If I had, I should hardly be likely to acquaint you with the fact. Ah, well, it is of no consequence. Oh? Monsieur Poirot has told me he can think of eleven excellent explanations of its presence. Not now, when it's all over. When it's behind us. Is that a quote? Mademoiselle Debenham said those words to you at Sakeki Station in Istanbul. Tell me to what those words referred. Why don't you ask Miss Debenham? I will. You have nothing whatever against her. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. We know that Mademoiselle Debenham was governess in the Armstrong household at the time Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped. The devil, you say? If Mademoiselle Debenham is innocent, why did she conceal the fact? I have no idea, but your suspicions are utter rot. Why did Mademoiselle Debenham tell me she had never been to America? You better ask her. I still think you are wrong. You're making a serious mistake. I think it is you, Colonel, who have made the mistake. Signore Foscarelli, I'm here for the truth. I think that everyone has underestimated this Signore Poirot, and you too, Signorina. You too. I found a chauffeur's license in your suitcase. Yes, but it is a fact I have loved motor cars my whole life. Selling them, though, is much finer than driving other people's cars. The license is issued by the state of New York. You said you lived in Chicago. Chicago is not in that state, is it? No, no, no. Chicago is in the state of Illinois. It will be a point in your favor if you tell me the truth. You talk like the American police. Come clean. <laughs> that is what they say. Come clean. You were arrested by the American police? Was that in New York? Arrested? No, no, never. They could not prove anything against me. Don't you think you should come clean, monsieur? It is true. I have not been frank with you. The word frank, it is odd, no? It is a man's name. But I think it is correct here. I, I am not frank. Sometimes, you know, a, a motor car may not be perfect, but you must make a sale. 
So you are not Frank. You were the Armstrong chauffeur, were you not? Since you know, why ask me? Why did you lie to me? Lie? Lie? I did not lie. I was not Frank. Why? I do not trust the Yugoslavian police. They do not like Italians. They would not have given me justice. Tell me about Daisy Armstrong. That little one. Ah, she was the delight of the house. Tonio, she called me. They all did. She would sit in the car and pretend to hold the wheel. Ah, such a beautiful little one. Have you been frank about your movements last night? I had nothing to do with that business. It was not I who killed that big ratchet. You cannot prove anything against me. Au revoir, monsieur. Come back later, Miss. I have a few more questions, Frau Schmidt, if I may. Yeah, of course. How long have you been with Madame la Princesse? Ten years. Fifteen years, Schmidt. Yeah, that is right. Fifteen, mademoiselle. I am sorry. This murder, this waiting, it distracts me. I understand you are an excellent cook. Yeah, indeed. All of my ladies have said so. I... Your Excellency. Calm yourself, Schmidt. You don't know what you are saying. That is true. I do not know what I am saying. That will do for now, Mademoiselle Schmidt. I have returned to you, Your Highness. I thought you might. I'm having some difficulty locating the owner of this handkerchief. I am sorry to hear that. If you had asked me, I could have told you it is mine. Yours? But, Your Highness, your first name is Natalia. I'm perfectly aware of my first name, mademoiselle. My handkerchiefs are always embroidered with Russian characters. In the Cyrillic alphabet, H is written as A. How did your handkerchief come to be lying by the murdered man's body? I have no idea. Your maid said she did not recognize this handkerchief. Schmidt believes in loyalty as I do. I believe in loyalty to one's friends and one's family and one's class. Thank you very much, Princess. Excuse me, please, Mademoiselle. Thanks to a master chef's perseverance, the Wiener Schnitzel and other felt. I won't find the notorious Scarlet. Well, of all the nerve, I don't need it. I don't think that's appropriate.
Poirot could see at once. It's locked fast. Every need. Every need. Princess Dragomirov's parasol! It is far out of your reach. The most generous of kidnappers. Are all your belongings restored to you? Monsieur Poirot. everything I have discovered so far. We progress, mademoiselle. Let us see what we can learn. This book of Masterman's reveals more than he knows. Love's captive by the inestimable Mrs. Arabella Richardson, yes. And what does it reveal to you? He was in the military. Most men of a certain age fought in the war, mademoiselle. Even Poirot. Still, it is worth pursuing. Well done. 
This driving license indicates Foscarelli has been a chauffeur. A not unnatural profession for a man who loves the motor cars. Hildegard Schmidt's recipe box is suggestive. You remember at dinner how she was most opinionated with the waiter while studying the menu? And the label on the box? It is interesting as well. My lady's recipes. Hmm. Now that suggests that she is accustomed to cooking for her employers. Not the duty one attaches to the lady's maid, Miss Puff. Mary Debenham's handkerchief does not match the one found next door. No, despite the middle name of Hermione beginning with an R, I did not think that the expensive handkerchief would belong to her. No, the handkerchief of Mademoiselle Debenham is precisely the type one might expect to find in the luggage of a young English woman of her class. The postcard I found in Greta Olson's suitcase tells a story. This card, it speaks to Poirot in many ways. Coney Island is, I think, on the Long Island of New York in America. A country she claims not to have visited. Mademoiselle Olsen does not send the postcard to Sweden as she perhaps intended, but saves it as a keepsake for herself. Mm, it is not a happy memory, this. A last brief moment in the sun for a family soon to be swept away by the storm. The handkerchief with the H belongs to the princess. I confess I should have remembered that in the Cyrillic alphabet, Arsh is written as N, and she has a strong motive to want Ratchet dead. But are we meant to believe that this elderly woman prances about in the scarlet silk kimono, or could strike with such ferocity? Foscarelli was the Armstrong chauffeur. It was a deduction most simple. Masterman was Colonel Armstrong's valet. And his Batman during the war. The nursemaid Suzanne, who threw herself to a death, was French. Oui. To know her full name might be instructive. Helena Gilbert's governess was an old hag named Freebody. What an unfortunate name for an old hag is Freebody. It is more apt a name for the generation of flippers. Flappers. The fast young women were called Flappers in America. Thank goodness skirts are finally lengthening again. As you say. I wonder if during your time at university in England you had occasion to patronize the clothing shops for the fashionable woman in London. No, Monsieur Poirot, not on a student's budget. There is such a shop near my own tailor called Debenham and Freebody, and the description the Countess gives to you is as far from the attractive young woman Mary Debenham as one could hope to get. The Armstrong nurse was named New Daughter. An odd name, that. What nationality do you think? Slavic or Scandinavian? Well, perhaps. I think that the Countess has the most fanciful mind and is quite adept at the word games. <coughs> she is playing them now. Noi Dottor sounds, I think, only by coincidence, vaguely Scandinavian. Olsen is, of course, authentic Scandinavian. New Daughter. New Daughter. Olson, old son. It is not yet fact, but it is worth pursuing. The scarlet kimono turns up in my luggage. I swear to you, it does not belong to me. Oh, mademoiselle, I have no doubt of that. You have vigorously pursued its owner's identity. No, no, no. It is a defiance, you understand? It is a gauntlet thrown down. Very well. We take it up. The Countess recognized no one on the train. Including Madame la Princesse? Her sister's godmother? Monsieur McQueen she may also have seen, but he has grown much, of course, and the appearance changes. But a woman of the advanced years of the Princess does not change so much, I think. No, I find this lack of recognition the most damning point against the Countess in all of her evasions and lies. So you see now why the Countess's failure to recognize anyone grows beyond suspicious. Perhaps she is nearsighted. If she were the second murderer in Ratchet's room last night, that might explain why she didn't notice he was already dead. Ah, uh, you know, at times you remind me so of my good friend Hastings. Can we use the ham radio to help the investigation? Oh, but certainly. Oh, this is a marvelous stroke of luck. Too often the coincidences, they help the criminal. 
What a refreshing change to have one that will aid Poirot. I have the friend, Monsieur Lewis. His son Barnabas is a boy of much energy and interests. One of these is the radio of Ham, as his proud father reports in a recent correspondence. Young Barnaby can be our eyes and ears in the outside world. His letters to call are there in my valise in the letter from his father. Use the radio of Ham to find out more from him about our current predicament. Oh, he is an invaluable asset, mademoiselle. Do not forget to secure his letters, or you will not have the information needed to reach young Barnaby. Schmidt is accustomed to cooking for her employers, as we suspected. And her mistake in how long she has been in the employ of the princess is remarkable. A difference one-third less than her mistress claims. Ten years. We must look deeper into this. What course do you suggest? I will radio to Barnaby. A wise decision, I think. Merci, mademoiselle. Unfortunately, the report, it is not yet complete. We are now armed with much more additional knowledge than before. Continue the investigation and do not be afraid to go over the ground you have already covered. The letter. Now I'd better put Monsieur Poirot's clothes back exactly as I found them. I wouldn't dare. I'd disturb Monsieur Poirot. 